Okay, um, like Catherine said, I'm Megan Mills. Um, I did my practicum in the Population and Public Health Division of the BC Ministry of Health, uh, specifically with the Alcohol and Harm Reduction Branch. So. so alcohol is both a highly valued and a highly valuable commodity in Canada. It's valuable in that it generates revenue for government and generates employment by way of the retail and commercial sale of alcohol within the food and beverage industry for manufacturers themselves, marketers, and so forth. And it's valued in that it plays a significant role in cultural and social environments across the country. And when consumed in moderation or in accordance with Canada's low risk drinking guidelines, there can definitely be less risk associated with consumption. Unfortunately, there are a number of Canadians who don't consume alcohol in a way that would be considered moderate and on the contrary, consume it in a way that would actually be considered harmful. So what is harmful alcohol use? Well, it's commonly associated with a person's patterns of drinking, like binge drinking or their relationship with alcohol. And these patterns of drinking and relationships can lead to uh, significant physical, social, and psychological harms, including chronic disease, accidents and injury, and both chronic and ongoing social problems. And these issues occur across a wide spectrum of settings. So not only do they impact individuals' lives, but they impact their families, the communities they're a part of, and society as a whole through indirect and direct costs. So in 2013, the government of British Columbia introduced, uh, or it announced that it was going to review BC's liquor laws. And this was known and is known as the Liquor Policy Review. And the government's intentions with this review were to, uh, quote, update, or excuse me, uh, modernize BC's outdated liquor laws. So what resulted were 73 recommendations in total. And as you can see from the screen here, some of these recommendations, if put into policy, uh, would result in increased access to alcohol. So for example, you've got extended hours for liquor service and the sale of alcoholic beverages and products in grocery stores. But one of the problems with harmful alcohol use is that as the overall levels of alcohol consumption increase, so, do, uh, excuse me, so does the overall incidence of its associated harms. So increased access can lead to increased harms. And as you can see you know, and understand likely, government plays a significant role in the promotion of alcohol. But they also play a significant role and have a responsibility to mitigate the negative effects that alcohol uh, use creates. So enter alcohol sense. Uh, in part, the government's public health response to some of the new liquor laws that have the potential to increase harms in the province. So Alcohol Sense is a multi-stakeholder initiative involving the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Justice, among others. And it has two major components. So the first is an online resource, a website for parents with evidence-based information to help parents uh, talk to their kids about alcohol use. And the second component are educational materials in the forms of posters that are going to be displayed in all public and private liquor stores across BC. So essentially the project was developed as a targeted intervention for youth, but it targets youth by way of their parents. And as you can see from the screen here, the stated goal of Alcohol Sense is to help kids develop a healthy relationship with alcohol. But I mean, what is a healthy relationship with alcohol? How do we define that? And once we've defined it, how can we measure if we've achieved it? Oops. Here we go. So my project at the Ministry of Health was to create an evaluation framework for alcohol sense. And the first part of developing the framework was to figure out what the actual concrete objectives of the campaign were. So to address this, I developed a logic model. And the logic model really helped clarify for me what exactly Alcohol Sense was trying to achieve. And I won't go over the whole model, but essentially, if you can see under the intermediate and long-term outcomes, those are sort of what the group involved with the project landed on as to the concrete objective. So we've got the utilization of Alcohol Sense and the Healthy Families BC website as a resource for parents, and the examination by parents of their own attitudes and behaviors around alcohol use, and the long-term outcomes, 
improve general communication between parents and kids, leading to an increased number, hopefully, of parents who meaningfully engage with their kids about alcohol use. And the thoughts between the intermediate and the long-term outcomes was that how can parents promote a healthy relationship with alcohol to their children if they themselves don't have one? So the next part of developing the framework was figuring out what tools to use to measure if the program's objectives were met. So for this, I decided to do two different sets of surveys. Uh, the first one was a pre- and post-launch survey for parents. And it focused, sorry, it was adapted from surveys by the McCreary Center Society on Adolescent uh, Health. And for that survey, the pre and post survey focused on two key areas. So first it asked demographic type questions, but it also asked about rates of conversations occurring between parents and kids and the rates of self-reflection among parents. So the plan was that both these things would be measured before and after the launch of the campaign to see if there had been a change before parents had been exposed to uh, the campaign materials. And the second survey was a post-launch survey for uh, BC liquor inspectors to uh, measure compliance rates of liquor stores to display these materials. So the thought with this survey was that essentially the success of the campaign might be impacted by how visible the materials were. If only half of BC liquor at stores or outlets are displaying the materials, then that's going to impact people's exposure to the campaign. And it's worth knowing about. So, how does alcohol sense relate to the mandala of health and health promotion in my mind? Well, from my experience uh, professionally and in this program, you know, I've seen what appears and can be a bit of a struggle sometimes to strike a balance between politics and healthy public policy. And as one can see with a liquor review, there are a number of good policies stemming from it, no doubt, but there are also ones that have the capacity to increase harms and they pose a threat to public health and the spheres that exist within the mandala. So, the practicum was overall just a terrific experience and I did a great deal of work outside of the project that was really interesting. Um, but there were definitely some challenges associated with this project specifically. And the first one being that, for example, when I was doing research for the project, I noted that there was evidence uh, that existed to suggest that public awareness and educational campaigns like Alcohol Sense weren't necessarily the most effective uh, interventions for combating harmful use of alcohol. And secondly, Given the evidence you know, that I've seen on um, behavior changes as sort of a complex, multi-stage process that doesn't necessarily happen within the one-month time frame of a government-led public awareness campaign, I think it's quite debatable as to how measurable the objectives of this campaign will actually be, and also how much of the change that will be observed can actually be attributed to alcohol sense. But I think ultimately, like my takeaway from the experience, and I hope the takeaway today, is that public health as a field of practice needs to be able to adapt to change and really do what it can with the scope and the sometimes limited scope that it's given. I think that in a dynamic environment like government, where priorities can change fairly quickly, the success of future public health interventions can be impacted by how they're able to adapt to emerging uh, policies that present challenges to health. So that's all. Right. Thank you, Megan. Now, questions. And I, I should just say, no, no pressure. But she actually came in under time, so we're going to catch up a little bit oh. of time here. <laughs> Any questions, hmm. folks? Oh, one over there. Thank you. Um, really interesting. I was just wondering. So, in Alberta, liquor sales are privatized mm. completely. With this kind of program or the, this, this public health initiative that you worked on, do you think it could have the same effect in a community or in a province where alcohol sales aren't completely run under the government, where there is that division? Do you think it could have the same impact in terms of the government playing that role? Or do you think it would require maybe more um, involvement of the private sector, how you would get that same yeah. effect, just your opinion. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I'm not 100% sure like what the legislation is in Alberta regarding um, alcohol sales, but I think, like you said, like relationship building and the maintenance of relationships would absolutely be like a key component of that. And I'm sure that um, branches of the Alberta government work in partnership with the private liquor industry to promote uh, the safe use of alcohol. Interesting. But, yeah. Well, I guess we'll move on. Thank you. Great. Okay.